Do you need to add another Ethernet port to your PFSense router? Do you want to know how to select an Ethernet card that's going to work? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to add a network interface to PFSense. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video. And that's how to add a network interface to PFSense. First, we're going to talk about how to find the right network interface for PFSense. Then go about installing the interface, configuring it. Then we'll show you how to use cron with the interface to be able to turn it off and on if you need to disable it and don't need it running all the time. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Let's give you a couple of thousand words and we'll kind of draw out why we're talking about an additional network port on your PFSense router or whatever router or firewall you may happen to have at home. So this is just kind of a very basic drawing of what you're probably running into now. And if you're using the AWOW mini PC format that I've got, well, this is pretty much going to be what you're dealing with now. So we've got the one port and that's going to be what connects to the internet. Then we've got the one that hooks to your local area network. But say you've got, like I do, some systems that you want to protect a little bit extra because even with firewalls, you may have done something or or something you've got on the local area network may do something that could involve compromising another host, or if it has a problem, could be flooding the segment with traffic and you're having a hard time getting in. Either way, there's a good reason why we're gonna drop another interface. If you've been using something other than the AWOW box, there are some of the chassis that have three, four, or more network ports on it. Well, that's great, but those also carry a significant price. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add another port and we'll just go from here and draw out a little line and we're going to set up in this case if i could write here we're going to set this up as what they call the dmz or demilitarized zone and this is going to be where we're going to put systems in there that we want to have a little extra protection for what a dmz can do is if you have something that has to have a public presence like i've got one of my crypto mining rigs that has to exchange traffic with multiple systems to replicate a blockchain well at that point it's got a public presence out here which port forwards in hits pfsense and goes to this box but since right now it sits over here then the problem you're going to have is that this one box here starts acting up it could affect other systems so that's why we're going to move it over here that's just one example you could put your servers or whatever you've got in your smart home in here it doesn't have to be called dmz you could call it servers you could call it whatever that you want to and this is purely up to you very easy to get set up and running i just kind of wanted you to to see kind of what i was thinking about now the trick to this is you're going to have to find a network card that pf sense like there are quite a few out there that should work you know so i said the word should i tried to find something that i thought was probably going to be fairly safe to proceed with because there's not really a master list now i'm doing this with a usb and before you start sending me a bunch of messages saying well you really should be using a regular network card well yes you're right but in my case where i've got the awow box I've got no expansion ports inside the box, so I have to use USB. The other thing with this is it's also going to be a case where I can temporarily add one. I don't have to open up the chassis. So what to look for in this is you've got something that needs to say Linux. Now, if it says Windows, hey, that's great. I'm happy. But since PFSense is running on a Linux distribution, we've got to make sure it says Linux because that way we've got a pretty good chance of this up and running. As you can see here at the day I'm shooting this, that's not a bad price also capable of doing gigabit now going in over usb we may not get gig but at least you're going to be getting something probably a little bit more than 100 meg it comes with a nice little manual comes with a driver cd you're going to need none of that this is going to get you started there are probably other options that will work but this is going to get you up and running as you are installing your latest smart home device grab a copy of my smart home checklist this will help you record information about each device as you set it up this will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information 
to anyone. I've already gotten logged into the PFSense router. To save time, I've already plugged in that pluggable USB to Ethernet adapter that we just looked at. So we'll go here to interfaces and you see it's only showing the two we got. Well, you go up here to assignments and you will see an available port. And I did not have to reboot PFSense to do this. This is the nice thing. It, it found it and displayed it on its own. What we will do is we'll click add. By default, it's going to say OPT1 and you can fix that but first we've got to save it so that it knows that it's there if you click on opt1 and we'll just call it well just to keep things in line with what we we're talking about earlier dmz you'll need to click on enable interface ip4 configuration we're going to be static because with this being in pfsense we need we're not we can't really depend on another dhcp and i'm going to say no to ipv6 I'm not going to worry about the mac address you can clone something if you need to again we're not going to worry about it i'm just going to let this figure out what it's going to do theoretically yes you should do gig and all that but this is that's purely pure. if you're going to be doing this heavily then yeah go ahead and statically set up the speed and duplex here's the where you've got to watch this one we're going to go ahead and tell it 10.0.4.1 that's because that's a range i'm not using of course even if i'm using it in front of the firewall using it behind would be different because we got nat sitting between us but that's conversation for another day note this right here if you run past this i'm going to show you what the problem you're going to run into is and we're going to leave both of these unchecked and we'll click save then we will need to apply changes and it's going to take it just a little bit to get things set up in pfsense not too long okay there we go now if we go over here to services DHCP server well hold it you only got LAN here that I wanted you to see this one because I ran into the same thing so we can go back over here we'll select DMZ we go down here and we want to select whatever subnet mask is appropriate and normally I use slash 24s or if you're not used to dealing in the slash range it's 255.255.255.0 so we'll say 24 and I'm not going to worry about an upstream gateway so we'll click save yes we've got to apply changes and as they say pregnant pause you want it now okay there we go so now with that change made if we go back to services back to dhcp server ta -da! there we go dmz shows up but if that's something that you're rushing through it or you just don't see it let's face it that's all that's going to happen to all of us at one point in time that's what's going to cause dmz to not show up under dhcp server so when I have devices easily come up and initially going on, that's probably a good thing to do is bring them up on DHCP and then you can always make a static assignment later or do a DHCP reservation. Again, your call. We'll go ahead and enable that. We're going to leave everything pretty much on and see with the sub subnet mask we went through. We've got a much larger range than they'll probably ever have to have. You can define a smaller range. Again, your call. You can put additional pools in. All this is going to be defaulted to what your master settings are. I'm not going to worry about this so everything is pretty much set to go and at ntp this is going to be something we probably should go ahead and push out we'll go ahead and say 10.0.4.1 because i want to push it out to the pf sense box i don't want it figuring out field range oh available range okay see i i, I was overlooking so this I'm, I'm a fine one to call this so normally i like to leave one through uh nine for system level like interface critical devices that are always going to have to be there for things to work so i'll start at 10 and 10.0.4.254 if i could type here that would help wouldn't it okay we'll go down here we don't need to worry about additional pool this is what happens when you're used to dealing a lot in consumer grade firewalls is i would have had to make that decision and some of them they would just automatically fill in the blanks to protect you from yourself so those have been applied okay there's our range so we're going to start at 10 254 we will set that up there tftp don't have to worry about additional boot p options if you're doing something special on your other network card you'll need to make sure you replicate that over here put the option number in whatever te now the, the text of the way sending it out and then the value but we're not doing that here so if we go over here to the main page now see it says dmz none it's not showing link but that's because i don't have it plugged in i want to get this set up before we proceeded on now if i go here to interface assignments we can do some creative things here now you will see bridge now that's where you know, some of your chassis can have multiple network ports on the same subnet. So if you're not using a switch, say it's a real small location or you've got this in another part of your house and you don't want to have to put yet another hub or switch there, you can make multiple ports be on the same subnet. So you can use 
the PFSense box as an Ethernet switch. Or in this case, if you're putting them on the same subnet, it, you're essentially a hub. But hub switch, you understand basically what's going on. Now, note here, of course, our two on the AWOW are RE1 for that I'm using for LAN, RE0 for WAN. UE0 is going to be the discovery name port for the DMZ. This will come important here in just a bit. So at this point, we've got DHCP up and running. We've got the network card configured. So you're ready to get started. You notice the, the interface statistic widget has already decided that it's going to tell you about DMZ. And on the other one here, you, you don't won't have to have some of this, but you can kind of see what I'm looking at on mine. And this will get you that much ready where you can, oh, one other thing here is I ramble on. We will have to go to rules. Forgot about this one, very important. Now, if you notice, WAN has its set of rules. LAN has its set of rules. What we've got to do is we've got a, to allow this any traffic on this port to go out. We'll click the, this is click on the button to add a new rule. Well, okay, we'll click add. We'll say pass interface DMZ IP4 because we're not going to really worry about six at this point. Source any, so you can make a rule restricted to a specific address and we're going to say destination any. I'm not going to log this one just yet, although this is a handy troubleshooting tool, but we will click save and we do have to apply the changes so now everything that comes in on this interface is allowed to go out so we, we could restrict it if we wanted to to be able to only going out to the dmz or i mean going out to the wan port so you can have one, some rules that are affecting what's going outbound to the internet and you've got other rules that could affect what's going to the interface so you can make this a very secure situation if you need to take it to that level at this point what we're going for is just simply segmenting the traffic so that we don't have everything all in one subnet or as they say all our eggs in one basket i'm going to show you an interesting use for an, another port on the firewall whether it's one we just added or you want to add yet another one say you have young ones at home that are just getting the age where they can allow to use the computer but you know they're kind of staying up past their bedtime so you want to make sure that they really can't do any more past a certain time so there is a function called cron and i'm going to do another video on this one i've already got it well into planning to kind of really take you through several other things that we can do with this one so we'll go to services cron what we'll do is set this up so that we can turn off that interface we just added a certain time say around bedtime and then turn it on just about the time they get up in the morning so it's not totally foolproof but at least it gives you a way of controlling what they can do so it's either they're hardwired in or they're on a separate access point that just happens to be on this port so even though they can attach to the ssid they're not going to be able to go anywhere we're going to have to set up two separate cron entries and these will run automatically now with the way cron works if you're not used to it there's really not going to be any logging we're going to be able to see that's because the whatever jobs we set up are responsible for doing their own logging but this i'm going to show you just the the quick and easy way to get this up and running so first we're going to say if they need to be in bed by we'll say 10 o'clock so that will be zero and then 22 and we're going to say uh, we'll just make it every day of the week for now every month every day of the week now typically you will do this as root unless you have another account set up although you cannot readily disable these rules because there's not at least with the gui interface that pfsense has in cron there's not a, a checkbox to enable or disable. So what you can do is change this user to a non-existent user like user or disable or something that doesn't exist. And that will prevent the rule from executing. And then this is going to be the command we're going to use. Okay, so here's the, I've already got the commands written out just so that I didn't mess things up. And you can try running these ahead of time. But once you get, make sure you got it right, then you will paste the command in here. And we have to be explicit with this command. So it's sbin ifconfig. And remember before where we talked about the port name, the, the like the RE0, RE1. So we're, since we're going to affect just the DMZ port, or we can call it kids port, what, you know, whatever you use this for, we'll put the machine name, for lack of a better phrase, in there. And then we'll use the word down. Then we will go here. We will turn it on at seven in the morning. Root. Now we can reuse the command we've got and just use up. So you can, one way of testing this is run these commands at, you know, you set the time, whatever you want it to be that's close to what you're in now. Let the command run by, with cron and then you can go in and check the interface status. So everything's all set to go. That's the extent of 
what you've got to do. So you can go in here and look once the port's been shut down. Well, you won't see it there, but if we go here to the main screen, you would notice it is down at the point. Because right now it's not showing us anything because there's nothing that it's plugged into. So it wouldn't have a link to show, but it would you should see is a down arrow when the port's been turned down and then the up arrow when the port's up. So that would be a good indication that it has run. And you, depending on what version of PSSense you're using, you may need to alter the command. Again, you've got the basic syntax of what to do. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that th YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.